Hey guys, uh, great to be back with you all again today. We're going to be talking about problem solving today. And we're going to be talking about a, a wide variety of skills, really. Uh, we're going to be talking about 3.4 A and K and 3.5 A and B. And that's problem solving with all operations, basically what it is. And um, the I can statements is uh, I can choose the correct operation to solve a word problem and I can use the correct strategies to solve uh, to, pro to problem solve. So uh, we're going to look at some of the vocabulary. Uh, since we're using all operations, that would be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are the four operations we use uh, in math. And uh, we have uh, for uh, addition, we have add in uh, are the two numbers we put together to get our sum, which is our answer. And minuend and subtra subtrahend uh, and difference. Uh, difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Uh, there's a community property of addition. That means I can switch the numbers around and still get the same sum. Uh, that's not a fact with subtraction, though. Uh, there's specific order. We always start with a larger number in third grade and take away a smaller number from that to get a, to get a whole number or a positive number. Uh, multiplication vocabulary. You know, it's factor, factor, those two numbers we put together in our multiplication to get our product. And there's a community property of multiplication, which means we can switch numbers around. Five times four is also 20. And uh, division vocabulary, uh, dividend, divisor, quotient. Quotient's the answer to, to a division problem. And uh, we cannot switch around. I cannot say that five divided by 40 equals eight. That would not be a true statement. So there's a specific order way we uh, divide things, just like subtraction. They're very similar. I uh, have a few videos we're going to watch um, uh, about, uh, about these skills. Uh, we'll watch one of Aaron's videos talking about how to solve uh, problems using different operations and stuff. So let's go ahead and get ready for those videos. When reading a word problem, there are often clue words that help us identify the operation that needs to be performed. Let's improve our understanding of word problems by spotting clue words. Luca went to the bakery and purchased five cookies, three cupcakes, and two brownies. What is the total number of desserts that Luca purchased? Did you spot the clue? The word total lets us know that we are looking for the combined number of desserts. So we need to add together the number of cookies, cupcakes, and brownies. The total is 10 desserts. Suppose the question was, what is the difference between the number of cookies and the number of brownies that Luca purchased? Do you see the clue word? The clue word here is difference. We must find the difference between the number of cookies and brownies. This means we must subtract 5 minus 2. So he bought 3 more cookies than brownies. Let's look at another word problem. A teacher plans to split his 24 students into three equal groups. How many students will be in each group? Hmm, are there any clues here? In this problem, we are looking to split an amount into equal groups. When we split something into equal groups, we are dividing. What if a different teacher already split his class into four groups of five? How many students were in that teacher's class? Can you find the clue word? The clue word here is of. Of is a clue word that often means to multiply. Great! This table summarizes some clue words for the four arithmetic operations. Can you think of any more?
In this lesson, you learned how to identify clues to the type of operation needed to solve a word problem. Okay, uh, on this problem, it says a total of 84 children sign up for Youth Baseball League. The league was able to form six teams with an equal number of children on each team. How many children were on each team? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and circle the important information. Uh, I have 84 children. And uh, the league was able to form six teams. And uh, those are the two numbers that are important to us in, on this question. Next thing I do is underline the question, how many children were on each team? So that's what I need to find out, how many children are on each team. I'll start boxing in some uh, operational clues here. Um, there's an equal, equal number on each team. Uh, I see the word total over here. And uh, I see each right here. So how many children were on each team? So uh, that's kind of getting me close to where I need to be. That looks like most information I can use to solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, since I see I got equal groups, I'm going to use my get strategy. Whenever I have equal groups, uh, I like to understand, you know, how many groups do I have? How many do I have in each group? And what is the total? So I need to, I need to know those three things in a multiplication or division problem. So uh, if I look up here, uh, the very first bit, it says that I have 84 total children. So that's going to go under my T. I've got 84 total children. Okay. Uh, next thing I'm looking at, it looks like I have teams, six teams right here. And it looks like what I'm trying to find out is how many children are on each team. So I think the each part is what I'm going to try to figure out because that's what's in my question right there. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And I'm going to have six groups. So uh, whenever we uh, whenever we use a get strategy and I know what my total is, I automatically know uh, if I know the total, um, I'm not, I'm, it's going to be a division problem. So my division problem is going to be 84 divided by six. And that'll tell me how many uh, children I have on each team. So probably the most common way to do that, uh, or easiest way, uh, way that you probably would have did it last year in second grade, is you would do grouping. So you got six equal groups, so I just go and draw your six equal groups. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And uh, I'll go ahead and start just separating the children. Uh, you could use an array to do this also, but that'd be a lot of, uh, that'd be a pretty big array, 84 dots we'd have to make. So, uh, this grouping's gonna work pretty good because since I have six groups and I have 84 total children, I know I can put at least 10 in each group. So I'll go ahead and start off by doing that. And then I'll end up being 60. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I'm using base 10 blocks. Those are how I draw uh, 10 or a long and base 10 blocks. And then I'll go ahead and start separating separate out by ones, uh, make dots for my singles. So that's 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, and 84. So I separate out all the kids and I have my teams uh, made up right there. And when I look, I can see that uh, there's not uh, 14 in each team. So I've got a 10 and four, that's 14. So 84 divided by six would be 14. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this guided practice problem. It says Tanner makes 36 blueberry muffins for the bake sale. He puts six muffins into each box and sells the boxes for $5 each. If he sells all the boxes, how much money does Tanner make? So, um, important information. I see 36 blueberry muffins and uh, I'd say six 
muffins in each box. And we're gonna sell each box for $5. I'm gonna box in some operational clues here. I see each box, that's each and every one. And I see $5 for each right there too. Um, so we're definitely talking about some equal groups. How many steps do you think they're gonna be in solving this problem? Yes, uh, we're gonna be able to solve this in two steps. Um, I see each a couple times. So we're gonna kind of separate this problem and uh, kind of separate it right here. So since we know we're talking about equal groups, I'm gonna go ahead and put my groups each and total right here. So on this problem, do I know how many groups there are? Okay, we don't know how many groups there are. The groups are gonna be the boxes. That's what we're trying to find out. That's one of the steps is finding out how many boxes there are. Okay, do we know how many are in each group? Yes, we do know how many are in each group because it says there's six muffins in each box. So there's six and that's muffins. Okay, and the total, do we know the total? Yes, we do know the total. There's 36 total muffins. Okay, but I think we have another, for instance, where we're gonna be using groups. Okay, in the second part of the problem. And total. So, in the second part of the problem, do we, uh, do we know how many groups there are? We don't know how many groups there are, but we are after we solve the first part of the problem. That's gonna be how many boxes there are. So once we figure out how many boxes there are, we'll transfer that information down here. Do we know how much are in each group? Yes, we do. We, there's $5, okay, because we sell each one of the boxes for $5. And do we know what the total is? No, we don't know what the total is. The to total is going to be how much money he makes selling those boxes of muffins. So what are we gonna to do to solve the first part of the problem? Yes, we're gonna do 36, or 36 divided by, Sorry, 36 divided by six. 36 divided by six, because we know what the total is and we know there's six muffins in each, each box. So uh, we have the picture of the muffins over here on the left. So uh, for me, we're gonna use partitioning. We're gonna partition these and put them into boxes until we fill all the boxes up and we see how many boxes we get. So and we said there's six muffins in each box, so I'll go ahead and put them into, boxes of six. That's two groups of three with six. There's a second group of six. Got a third group of six. It's a fourth group of six. A fifth group of six. And a sixth group of six. So we figured out on this problem that 36 Divided by six is six. So that means he has six boxes of muffins, six boxes. So now I can bring that information down here. I know that I got six boxes. So what am I gonna do to solve this second part of the problem? Yes, that's right. I know how many groups there are. I know how many are in each group and I'm trying to find out the total. So that's gonna be six times five. And that'll tell us how much money he made selling those boxes. So I can model that by putting a five in each one of these boxes. So each one of those is gonna be $5. And I can skip count by fives to figure it out. So I'm gonna skip count by five, six times. So that's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So it looks like he made $30 
selling his muffins. So we look at this answer choice right here. That's going to be our answer right there. But let's go ahead and look at uh, our answer choices right there. They threw some, some things in there to kind of mess us up. So um, how do you think they came up with the answer 36? Why do you think they put 36 there? Yes, uh, a lot of people like to look at these problems and they don't read them carefully and they see a picture of some muffins, they just start counting muffins. And if you just start counting the muffins, you ended up with 36 right there. And that's the first answer choice. So that's the first one, first way they're trying to trick you. How do you think they came up with the answer choice H, 47? Yes, they probably looked at the problem. They've seen 36, seen 6, and they've seen 5. And uh, something uh, third graders like to do, uh, we call it grab and add. So they look at the numbers and they just add all those numbers up. So um, what is 36 plus 6 plus 5? Yes, uh, let's check it out, make sure. So 36 plus 6 plus 5. I know 6 plus 6 is 12. And then 12 plus 5 is 17. So put the 7 down there, carry the 1, and 3 plus 1 is 4. And you get 47. And that's how they got answer choice H. They just gra grabbed all three of those numbers and added them up. Okay, but our correct answer was G because we took our time, we showed our strategies, and we worked it out and uh, got $30. So he made $30 selling the 36 muffins. Okay, we're going to look at our next guided practice problem. It says, Taylor knows that hexagons have six sides. He makes a table to show the number of sides on different numbers of hexagons. And if you look at the table right there, uh, the, um, the top row right there is talking about how many hexagons there are and the, how many sides each of one of those hexagons have. So uh, we're going to be talking about the relationship between the number of hexagons and the number of sides. So whenever we're talking about um, tables, you can have any relationship. You can have any of the four different relationships, any of the four operations that we use in math. That's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So uh, what relationship um, do you think it is between the number of hexagons and the number of sides? Okay, let's check that really quick. So uh, a lot of times third graders uh, like to go with addition first. And that's a pretty easy addition problem. So 1 plus 5 does equal 6. That works. Okay. But if we say that's a relationship, we have to use that relationship uh, across all the data. So we'll check it on the next set. So 2 plus 5 does not equal 12. That didn't work. We'll check one more time. 3 plus 5. 3 plus 5 does not equal 18. So it's not an addition relationship. So let's go ahead and erase that. And since the numbers are getting bigger, and it's not addition, that means it's got to be a multiplication relationship. So if we start with a 1, that's a pretty easy, um, pretty easy multiplication problem. 1 times 6 does equal 6. 2 times 6 does equal 12. 3 times 6 equals 18. And 4 times 6 does equal 24. So I think the relationship on this table is going to be times 6. So, there's, uh, we could, uh, a lot of times third graders like to do this too. They like to extend the table out, keep on extending the table out until they get to 12, uh, 12 uh, hexagons. So you start with five, then you go, uh, you go five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, until you get all the way over 12. And that's one way of doing it. And it would take, a, it's a lot of steps to do that, and you could do that. Okay, but we, really, we can solve this problem in one step. We can solve it in one step. So um, we're going to do uh, basically an area model to solve this problem. We know the relationship is times 6, so, and we know that we have 12 hexagons. 
So we could do uh, the math problem 12 times 6 to solve it. Twelve times six. So, but I'm going to do an area model to solve it. So right here I have, scoot over a little bit here. Right here I have, uh, I'm going to draw an area model. So I'm going to draw, there's going to be 12 rows that represent the 12 hexagons. And it's going to be six columns to represent the six sides. So this is 12 by six. And uh, not really good, I really haven't gotten my 12s down too well, so I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down into 10 and two. So what would the area of this part right here be? Yes, that's right. We would multiply 10 times six, and that would be 60 or 60 sides right there. So what is the area of this part right here? Yes, we would do two times six and we know two times six is 12. So the area of that would be 12 or 12 sides. So if I wanna figure out what the area of the whole rectangle is, I would do 60 plus 12 and I would get two 72. Okay, or using the standard algorithm, I would go multiply up first. Six times two. Six times two is 12. I carry the one. And then I multiply across. Six times one is six. Plus one more is seven. I get 72. So it looks like we have 72 sides for 12 rectangles. Okay, it's time again to complete your independent practice. So please complete your Schoology assignment. It's going to be after this link. Um, and uh, I'm going to put a PDF in there uh, right after this link. So if you want to go ahead and print it out, and um, then before you put it into Schoology, uh, just make sure you get to put it in Schoology. Sometimes it's easier uh, doing the assignment with pencil and paper. Uh, if you have any questions, though, email your teacher uh, or send them a message in Schoology. And uh, take your time, do your very best, and best of luck to you.